to watch him you know in, in motion was just amazing like at times in the middle of the match I actually forgot that I was commentating on the match because I was so enthralled by what he was doing and how he was doing it and I had to remember God he's going to be asking me for my opinion in a minute because I found myself just watching him and he just he really loved what he did and I think that came across as well when you were listening to him but it's just it was such a privilege and like that year in 2010 he retired yeah. from commentating like the Cork Down football um, All Ireland. It was the last match that he was, um, you know, broadcasting on. So for me to have even had that chance, and I often, Dad and I would often have talked about that, that that was the only upside of not playing with Cork that That's All true. Ireland was that I got the chance to to commentate with him, and you know, just I suppose people will always talk about Michal with such love but I think it was his ability to bring matches to life and his wit like obviously the level of professionalism he had but the lines that he would just throw in in the middle of a match and in the middle of a commentary and I remember my late dad always saying one of the ones that he loved was when Joe Rabbit and Pat Fox were playing Cook Park against each other when, <laughs> yeah. when Galway and Tip were playing and when he said about you know I've never seen a, a rabbit chase, chase a, fox a fox around Cook Park I've seen it all he just you know, I suppose he brought games to life and he had just an ability to inject colour. Um, and, you know, I suppose really it's wonderful that we can celebrate him today, but it's just such a sad day as well for the GA world because, wow. you know, he was one of the very, very best. It must have been daunting though, Anna, was it? I can't imagine. When you, like, it's one thing to sit into a commentary box and, and do a comment when, you, when it's not your, you know, when you're, you're used to being on the field of play. But to have to sit in beside me, Holomer or Hartig and keep up with that. Well, let's just say, I suppose, I was having, you know, normally when you're playing a match in all Ireland final day, you have loads of nerves. I had loads of nerves that day just for a very different reason, you know. And, you know, I think like that, he just made you feel so at ease. And I can remember him, you know, as the legend broadcaster that he was. And he was still turning around to me moments before the ball was thrown in. Don't be afraid now to elbow your way in here and don't be afraid to give your opinion and don't be afraid to disagree with me. You know, he just, he put me at ease because that was my very first, you know, live radio appearance and to do it with Michal and to do it in that way. And it was Wexford actually won their first all Ireland and went, went on to win three in a row. But he just, he put me at, at such ease and we had such such a brilliant day together. And I can remember afterwards, you know, in, in some ways it being one of the greatest memories um, for me as a camogie player, even though I actually wasn't on the field of play. Yeah, that's incredible, isn't it? And as you say, mm. you should have been playing that day. Yeah, I mean, I can remember now, it was very bittersweet for me because any player will tell you when, you know, you're not in the All-Ireland final having lost the semi-final to Galway, I was pretty distraught being there. But if nothing else, it was a nice distraction knowing that I was getting the opportunity and the privilege to, to be in the same, you know, place as Michal and, and to work with him on it. But, um, and that's in the know, archives. That's in the archives yeah, now, Anna. Exactly, that yeah. I probably won't listen back to it because I don't know how my performance will be, but I'm sure he is a top class. <laughs> do you do you have you have a photo with them, do you, from that time? Yes. Yeah, it was actually it was it was from one or two years later we were working again at another mass. Oh, have we lost Anna? in the room? Hello? Sorry, Anna, I thought your line dropped there for a second. No, you're okay. No, I remember there was lots of people in, in the GA, you know, in the GA world there, very well known, very well respected people. But the only person that I wanted to get a picture with that day was Michal Murhati because I'd been so nervous a few years previous that I never actually got a picture with him the day we co-commentated together. So I made sure that we got a picture that day and, and I, I found it this morning when I heard the news. So I'm so glad that I have it um, as a memory to keep. Okay. And we're going to take a break there. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we're getting so many calls in. Uh, we have more people to go to after this. We'll take a break. Talk to Joe on 0818 715 815. Talk to Joe on 0818 715 815. Now, I want to talk to a man who produced um, Michal Amara Hertig for decades, for 30 years, uh, the ex head of sport here in RT, Ian Core. Ian, you're very welcome. Hi, Katie. Uh, sad day, Ian. Ah, uh, yeah. I just first of all, I'd like to offer my sympathies to the lovely Helena and that great family of his. And the light has gone out of their life, but they will rejoice in the knowledge that they knew him for all those years. Yeah. What? What? Uh what a legend! I keep saying the word, but it's the word that keeps coming uh, yeah. back to us. Yeah. Uh, that the, the what Anna was saying there, and what Michael was telling us, and indeed Bomber about just the the extraordinary professionalism and meticulous research he would do before he would 
uh, go into the box to commentate on a match. That's right. And the, uh, the, the thing about me was he was funny and compared to other people, other commentators. In all the years I worked with Mihal, he never complained once <laughs> about any of the commentary positions he had to work in. And I can tell you, Primitive would hardly describe some of them. But Mihal would never complain that he had a bad time. The old, the old big guys who would have worked with him at one stage before his family came along to assist him with various things in the commentary, uh, would sit beside him. But they stopped doing that very quickly because Michal had a tendency when a score would go in or an event happened on the pitch, he would give them a punch on their arm and they had a lot of them move back into the commentary box. He was a phenomenon in the sense that he never allowed the white lines to limit his vision of what was going on in front of him. And he actually would have, if he happened to be in a ground where you could see maybe an animal in a field or something like that. He would remember Richie Bennis. I can't remember the circumstance, but I think he had to point a, uh, a free to win the match for Limerick. And Mihal commented about the fact that there was a cow in the next field hmm. who were, was quite indifferent to what was happening on the pitch. And that was Mihal's gift. He worked in images. And he carried that on to everything else about him. I would have spent a lot of time, tra- not a lot, but a good few times tra- traveling uh, down to matches with me. Hall. I would usually be in the studio, but occasionally you'd go down to do something, say, in Kerry. And me, Hall knew every inch of ground mm-hmm. between RTE and Kerry. I remember asking him on one occasion, what are those white lines? across the road. And of course, he was able to tell me this was the way that the authorities had a way of testing the paint that would be best used to put the lines on the road itself. And then, if you were coming back from Kerry, he'd say to you, do you think if we turned right here, it might be a more direct way? And I'd say to me, oh, this is Kerry. I struggle to get around Drimna. I said, what are we going down here for? And what he was going down for was there would be some man living down a, a, a small road, small house, living on his own, but he would have won an All-Ireland or maybe two All-Ireland medals for Kerry. And me Hall would go down and visit him for, you know, 20 minutes or so and chat to him. And that was typical of me Hall. He was fantastically interested in people. Uh, he would have this ability. When you met him first, or anybody met him, if you were in his company, the first thing he'd ask them, having determined who they were and got their names, he would say, and where are you from? And it is a living certainty that it didn't matter where, what village he was in in the country, he would know somebody that they knew. And they were absolutely fascinated by the fact that he would know that sort of information. But he loved the whole notion of the GAA as a village. And he knew every person that came from any county in Ireland. He had something to say to them. He knew something about where they came from. Uh, He would be a man who would never make the mistake (laughs) some commentators have of mispronouncing the name of some small place. People hate that. Michal never would do that. But also he was a desperate messer. Uh, If you were playing golf against him, as you walked to the first tee, he would say, I believe your putting has improved. And you'd say, what's he talking about? (laughs) Until you got to the green, and then you realise as you stood over the putt, it was a ball hop, and now you're uncertain about your putty. That was the sort of thing he did. Or if you said Psychological warfare, him, Ian. Psychological absolutely. warfare. Absolutely, <laughs> and he was well into that. The other thing that he, he, he had a t- terrible habit, after the matches in Croke Park, for example, you would want him to do the uh, 
report of the match. But he insists in walking over to the um, from from the um, Hogan stand across the pitch, and it took him forever to get back because he kept meeting people on the on the pitch, or uh, and you, he just lost all bearings as to what he was supposed to be doing, and because he just could not resist the temptation of talking to people, he loved it. And the other thing he was, his observational skills were fantastic. There's a great story Jack O'Shea told me that after one of the, uh, probably in All Ireland, it had to be if Kerry were in it, but he, he had got a, a present from, for some anniversary I think, of his, from his wife, Jack. And he was, he was wearing it around, it was a cross, a gold cross. And he was wearing it around his neck. And when he finished the match, he suddenly discovered it was no longer there. And he was saying this to Michal the following day. And Michal brought him back to Croke Park. He says, I know where that is. And he's, he was able to walk over to the spot and pick it up from the grass. Because he, th- there had been a contretemps between Jack and somebody else. A schmozzle, as we say. Arms said. flying. Yes. And he reckoned that's where it had fallen off. And he found it. And he was, it, uh, he was just, a, he was a magic man. He was. Uh, who cared not only about uh, the GAA. Funnily enough, it's an interesting thing about Ian, I'm going to hold you and hold that story and hold on for me, please. Because I have, right. I have somebody hanging on the line. I know whose time is precious as well. Um, Mary McAleese, good afternoon. Ah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What a sad afternoon. What a sad afternoon. Uh, and I know everyone's thoughts are, are with, with the family. And you, 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 yourself and Martin would know the family. We would. Uh, we would. And indeed, Martin worked very closely with, um, with Michal's uh, lovely, talented daughter, Nula, for a number of years. And Nula was on the phone this morning to tell us the bad news, um, the sad news that we had been tic-tacking with her during the week when we knew that he wasn't so well um, and hoping, of course, uh, hoping against hope that he would pull around again and hoping that he would live another 10 years because he just, well, you know yourself, he's the, he's the voice of the Gale. He is the voice, well, if you're away anywhere and you were listening to a match, he was the voice of home. And his storytelling capacity, uh, you've just heard, but ca- he, was a, he, he was a man of hu- hugely talented. I mean, just hugely talented. Um, his powers of description, his storytelling. I still remember him telling the story of going to um, Midnight Mass when he was a youngster in a pony and trap when he was uh, home in Kerry and telling the story of describing that. And no, no book, no, nothing could do justice the way he did in, in relaying that story brilliantly um, on the radio. It's just totally magnificent and we have a great friend a great late friend of ours Pat Guthrie um, also a great GAA man who used to um, take Michal um, when he would because Michal travelled the country he had invitations from right left centre of all over Ireland GAA clubs wanted nobody but, but Michal to talk to them and he would go from one GAA club to the other um, um, night after night and Pat would drive him and Pat would send that every time the tea was pr- pr- produced and the cakes and the sandwiches me hauled the t- time to move on to the next place and Pat was starving but the promise that me hall would make to him was when we get home when I get back to the house he'd say I'll put the pan on we'll have the best fry up when they got back to the house Pat described all you know and me hall had a big family and he'd have to get every child out of bed take them up on the knee and ask them all us Gaelga how they get on in school during the day and he would pet them and kiss them and hug them and eventually when the youngest one and I'm not sure if it was Nula but it might have been one of the younger ones eventually um, after about an hour of this performance of being Dada, dada um, uh, Pat said to him I declare to God I declare to God Michal if you don't put that pan on I'll actually go to eat the child so he loved telling that story uh, and everybody everybody in this country I would say has a Michal story um, what a welcoming family, what a beautiful